闘技を始めた7年ようやく古いなきは続いた The gut piercing knee slam smashes through. When you break the rules, you feel like you defy the world. But one thing you fail to notice is that in the ring with Buakao, rules exist to keep you alive. The Japanese kickboxer Takeyuki Kohiru Imaki was unfortunate enough to be drawn against Buakao, but he didn't stop there. He dared to break the rules. What did the White Lotus do to the Japanese fighter? What happens to Buakao's opponents that break the rules? There's only one way to find out. It was the 7th of July, 2004. K1 World Max sponsored the Kickboxing and Martial Arts 2004 World Tournament Final. Eight finalists and two reserve fighters competed in the third K1 Max Final for middleweight kickboxers. 70 kilos or 154 pounds weight class. With all matches conducted in accordance with K1 regulations. But someone didn't get the memo. Takeyuki is an elite kickboxer by all standards. Coming into the fight with Buakao, he had every right to be the challenger. He had been in the pro business of smashing skulls to a pulp for two years before Buakao would go pro. And with 29 wins already under his belt, he was poised to make the White Lotus his 30th victim. But Buakao was ready. Also known as Black Gold, the Thai champion was already some sort of folk hero. But this is the platform that he needs to show the world what he can do with his devastating kicks. Buakao enters the fight off the back of four grueling rounds with the Australian Saitama, John Wayne Parr. It was his 31st win, but Takeyuki is not phased. After all, since his childhood at his birthplace in Misawa Ayamori, He first trained in karate at the Kyokushin Kaiken branch before switching to kickboxing at Tokyo's Active J Gym. He made his professional kickboxing debut on January 31st, 1997, with the All Japan Kickboxing Federation, winning his first match by knockout at round three. He faced and defeated Masato early on in his career on May 30, 1997, where he used knee strikes to demolish Masato by TKO at round three. He faced up against Tatsuya Suzuki, the AJKF's current welterweight champion, on October 26 and won via TKO at round two. He left AJKF following this fight because Active J, his gym, chose to leave the network. And going into the fight with Buakao, Takeyuki would let nothing stop him from giving the White Lotus a piece of the action, not even the rules. But following his recruitment by K1 on October 3, 1999, Kohiro Amaki competed in the K1 World GP 99 opening special match against Kotetsu Boku. Five rounds of action resulted in a draw for the fight. On the global scene, Takayuki Kohiro Amaki is not as well known as Buakao entering this major bout. He's a Japanese kickboxer, and although he might not be as well known throughout the world, he definitely has a skill set that has made him respected in local circuits. But Buakao has been doing this since he was barely eight years old. Born in Surin Province, he quickly built a reputation around his formidable Muay Thai and kickboxing skills. He fights with confidence and aggression, frequently using powerful clinch work, accurate hitting tactics, and deadly kicks. And even up to this point in his career, Buakao has defeated many elite opponents, enough to make a pile of corpses. And he would not mind adding Takeyuki to that pile. The arena in Tokyo, Japan is packed as tickets are sold out to witness the birth of greatness in the World Tournament semi final. The stakes indeed are high and the atmosphere is electric. The bell dings. Buakao drives forward. Quick feint, but Takeyuki blocks his right hook. Hard charge forward and lands a right blow to Buakao's head. In one fluid movement, he grabs Buakao's left leg. The White Lotus could be in a lot of trouble here. Kicks Buakao hard to knock him off balance. But one kick could not be enough for Takayuki, and the rule says you cannot kick more than once when you're holding your opponent's leg. Takayuki breaks the rules, and Buakao knows it. It just got personal. The fight resumes, and with his shoulders facing Takayuki squarely, Buakao absolutely ravages the Japanese kickboxer with an endless barrage of quick fire attacks. High left knee slam, body blows, slams, blows. Takeyuki just had his control of the game slip in these hot three seconds. He knew he was in trouble, determined to prove he is still worth his weight in gold, 
Both fighters are entwined in a bear grab mauling, but Takeyuki could not break free fast enough to avoid brutal body slugs from Buakao. The Black Gold, as he is also known, has been at this since the age of 15. That was when he relocated to Cha Ching Shao, where he trained at the Poor Pramuk Gym, and Datamin Kiatanan was his first fighting moniker. Buakao stomps on Takeyuki, trodden down, and completes his cold walk away from the struggling Takeyuki. Whatever lead he had in this game is now gone. He shouldn't have broken the rules, but will he beg for mercy? Not in his life. Takeyuki gets slammed into the canvas, kicked, tossed, and beaten around like an overused doll, but Takeyuki still has the fire in him. He kicks Buakao once, and boy does he regret it. Takeyuki receives brutal pummeling that would make him wish he came with a helmet. Man gets scraped, kicked, beaten. You almost feel bad for the guy. Now he doesn't even seem to know which way is up, but more grabs and kicks pound in. Takeyuki tries to buy time, jumps in for a bear hug, but it takes a few seconds for Buakao to leave him gasping for breath. The White Lotus leaves the Japanese kickboxer pale, white as death. It has become a one-sided affair, a single demolition. The question now is, what flowers would you have on your grave? Successive high knee blasts into Takeyuki's lower torso opens him up for a high knee slam in the face. The Japanese drops. The fight is leaving him. Five, six, seven, eight. Takeyuki is back on his feet. The crowd goes wild as they, oh, another powerful kick sends him down. Slammed into the ropes, punched and beaten to a soft pulp. The referee couldn't have intervened quicker. Like a bunny between a tiger's jaws, Takayuki's feeble attempts to break free are useless against Buakao. The Japanese had been outclassed and overpowered. He had been served all on the menu. Kicks, back punches, gut slams, his torso had it all. The bell goes off, and guess who needs a break? At least he makes it to round two. Determined to give it his best shot yet, Takayuki rallies for a massive comeback. But Buakao smashes all hopes and dreams with triple high knee smashes followed by a massive left uppercut that turned out to be overkill. Takayuki did not need to take the uppercut to go down. Buakao continues his assault with more high knees in Takayuki's face. And it's a chokehold on the ropes now. More back punches, high stomping to the chest and rapid fire against his ribs. Buakao stomps Takayuki to the canvas and the bell timely intervenes. Demolition is complete. Now Takayuki can finally take a seat. The seat of the vanquished. Buakao is a seasoned fighter in Bangkok who has won multiple titles. But if you choose to play stupid games, then you're insisting on winning stupid prizes. His first title was the featherweight championship from Omnoi Stadium. He would go on to win the title of Thailand's featherweight champion after that. Buakao went on to win another title belt at Omnoi Stadium, this time in the lightweight class. At Lumpini Boxing Stadium in December 2002, Buakao emerged victorious in the Toyota Marathon 140-pound competition, defeating the highly esteemed Satoshi Kobayashi of Japan in the championship match. Many aspects are involved when comparing fighters such as Buakao and Takeyuki Kohirumaki. These include combat techniques, background, accomplishments, and physical characteristics. Buakao's strength is his combination of comprehensive Muay Thai knowledge, clever clinch work, and strong kicks. His wealth of high-profile competition expertise offers him a significant advantage in terms of poise and flexibility. However, Takayuki's strategy in the combat game, which can combine offensive and defensive tactics, would dictate how successful he is against a strong foe like Buakao. The tournament winner was eventually Poor Pramuk, won the 10 million yen first prize by defeating reigning K1 Max champion and pre-tournament favorite Masato in the final, by unanimous decision after an extra extension round. It was an excellent victory for the relatively unknown Thai who would burst onto the global kickboxing scene and would go on to become a real force in the middleweight division. But there are crucial angles that make Buakao such a great fighter. Stay tuned.